Two days later. Two days later. Two the mass. A few days after the ascension, but within the octave of the mass of the ascension, the epistle of the ascension mass, taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. The former treatise I made, O Theophilus, of all things, was Jesus began to do and to teach, until the day on which giving commandments <clears throat> by the Holy Ghost to the apostles whom he had chosen, he was taken up to whom also he showed himself alive, after his passion by many proofs, for forty days appearing to them, and speaking of the kingdom of God, and eating together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but should wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard, saith he, by my mouth, for John indeed baptized with water, and you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. They therefore who came who come together asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? But he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the moments which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, Judea and Samaria, and even to the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had said these things, while they looked on, he was raised up in a cloud, received him out of their sight. And while they were beholding him going up to heaven, Behold, two men stood by them in white garments, who also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you looking up to heaven? This Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come as you have seen him going into heaven. And then the Gospel, taking that according to St. Mark, chapter 16. At that time, Jesus appeared to the eleven, as they were at table. And he upbraided them with their incredulity and hardness of heart, because they did not believe them who had seen him after he was risen again. And he said to them, Go ye into the whole world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents, and if they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. And the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God. But they going forth preached everywhere, the Lord working with all, and confirming the words with the signs that followed. That's for the words for today's Holy Gospel. We're in a great today consideration of this, the mystery of Ascension Thursday. Our Lord did spend 40 years, I mean 40 days, after Easter, preparing for the next 2,000 years. And during those 40 days, he was reminding his apostles and proving his apostles and encouraging his apostles and strengthening them in their faith. And then he gave them the final instruction. The final instruction that goes from that time until the end of the world. They would have ten days of preparation, which we're in right now, during this time of the sacred retreat, the first novena, the nine days between Ascension Thursday and Pentecost uh, Sunday. We're in that time right now, the time of the, the short time of the Ascension. And during this time, they're with Our Lady, getting strength and preparing for the coming of the Holy Ghost on Pentecost. But our Lord gave his final instruction and we, all, we oftentimes forget about this final instruction of our Lord. And he came to his apostles, and first he upbraided them because of their lack of faith. And then, remember later on, he would tell them, he would tell the disciples, why didn't you believe when you got the evidence? You got the evidence, but you didn't believe. That happens many, many times. People get the evidence, but they don't believe. So they have the evidence. They are the evidence of the... Uh, of the resurrection, the holy women were there, the, the soldiers were gone, St. Peter saw our Lord, St. John saw all the evidence, and yet the apostles were still slow to believe. And then St. Thomas, when he got all the evidence of all the other apostles, he still was slow to believe. And then they finally all believed, but, but way after getting all the evidences, it took them a long time. And he upbraided them for their lack of faith. And this is a warning for us. Just like, remember, on Holy Thursday, the apostles, Peter, James, and John, they spent three hours in the agony of garden, in the agony of the garden. 
And our Lord simply wanted them to be awake for only one hour. That's all he wanted. Could you not wash with me one hour? I gave you three opportunities to wash with me an hour, to comfort me for one hour. And they failed during those three hours. And so therefore, for the next 2,000 years, the church has established many orders of contemplation to make up for that hour. And also we have the practice of the holy hour, which we encourage all, all, the, all the priests are encouraged to do. It's the only request he ever made to his priest. Could you not watch one hour with me to make a holy hour every day of their entire lives? And that this hour is being filled up. The hour of the failure of the apostles of Holy Thursday night. And we all know about that hour of that failure. But there is another failure of the apostles, even after the resurrection, before the Holy Ghost came. And that was, they got the evidence, but they were slow to believe. And we have to make up for the error of the apostles, which the first error was the error of not being with Christ. And because they weren't with Christ during that one hour, they didn't have a deep understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when he rose from the dead, of course they couldn't believe he rose from the dead naturally, but when they saw the evidence and they remembered the teaching of Christ, they remember what he said, they should have realized, yes, Jesus Christ really did rose from the dead. Mary Magdalene is a very serious lady. And these other ladies are very serious. And they saw the tomb roll back. And she saw Jesus Christ. And St. Peter saw our Lord Jesus Christ. And they know him very well. They could not be mistaken anyone else for him. And so the other apostles still didn't believe. They locked themselves in the upper room. And then finally, our Lord appeared to all of them except for Thomas. And it took so long, even though they had the evidence, and the evidence, the evidence, but not all of them failed. St. John was the one who was blessed. He Remember, he said that to Thomas before this day of Ascension Thursday. He said, Thomas, blessed are, he, are those who did not see and yet believed. And that was St. John. So there are 12 apostles, including St. Matthias, who were slow to believe, but then, but except for St. Except for John, who did believe quickly when he saw the evidence. And therefore, our Lord upbraids them on Ascension Thursday. Be not slow to believe. We have now 2,000 years of the history of our church. We have so many examples of the saints going through every conceivable and inconceivable problem, every conceivable and inconceivable crisis. And as they've gone through them, they have, gone, they, have been, they have conquered them and conquered them. We read the lives of the saints. We have their stories each day of the liturgical year. We have the reminder of the resurrection and the death of our Lord Jesus Christ every year. The reminder of the truth. We have the real and true blessed sacrament with us. All these things. What are they for? To test and strengthen our faith. When an athlete does all kinds of exercises it's so that he can win the Super Bowl. Is so that he can win the championship in boxing, since this is Las Vegas. And now they got the UFC. So you got, you know, say so you gotta go here in order to win the championship in boxing. That's why they exercise. That's why they exercise. They don't exercise because it's fun to exercise, because it's good for their health, but in order to achieve the prize. And our Lord and St. Paul made that very clear also. We must fight that we may achieve the prize. So now we arrive on Ascension Thursday, and our Lord Jesus Christ upbraids his apostles. And there must be those who are like St. John in every age. St. John was not, did not fail. The other 11 did. And St. John was successful in that he did believe with the right evidence. And he firmly believed when he saw the resurrection. But the St. John failed on Holy Thursday night when with James and St. Peter that he slept in the garden. But our Lord then gives the warning that, that, that we must... Um, be not slow to believe. We have all the evidences. And then he tells us, what are we supposed to do? Now we know that between Pentecost Sunday and the end of the world, the Catholic Church will continue. And the Catholic faith will continue. And there will be many tribulations and many trials in every age, including our age in 2020, and all ages before us, and the ages that will come after us until the very ending of the world. And so what are we supposed to do during this age? And there, and the Lord's going to win. But what is our responsibility? You must be witnesses to me, says our Lord Jesus Christ. What are we supposed to do? And they said, Lord, is this time for you? It is now the time to restore the kingdom of Israel? But he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the moments which the Father hath put into his power. So we know, for instance, in our time, the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary is near. We know that we're near the time when the, when, when the Pope is going to consecrate Russia to the background of Mary. But how near are we? 
Are we six months away? Are we six years away? Are we 60 years away? We don't know how near we are. And, that, and our Lord says you must not know how near we are. It is not given for you to know the times. So that's not what we're supposed to do. How many are owners who want to know what the prophecies say? What's the day? Was, uh, somebody sends me a note regularly saying that this is the day of the chastisement, this is the day of the chastisement. Then you got to remember Planet X is going to show up, and Planet X is going to show up, and Planet X is going to show up. And there's going to be three days of darkness next week, and this is going to be the time. 100 years is Acts 1917, 100 years is 1929, 100 years is, what is the exact 100 years? And maybe it's, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's the 100 years after 1900, 100 years after, after 1917, 100 years after 1929. And our Lord makes it very clear. Yes, he, the, the God did say that to, to uh, the Leo XIII will be 100 years, but it's an approximate 100 years of the devil being released. But it is not for you to know the times. We we'll always want to know the wrong things. But he said that, but, but should, should wait for the promise. It is not for you to know the times or the moments which the Father hath put out in his own power. But you shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the uttermost part of the earth. What is our duty? Our duty is to be witnesses. This is the origin of the sacrament of confirmation. We must be witnesses. The word martyr means witness. It's a Greek word for, for witness. The witness is the one who tells the truth. And the devil, whenever you have a trial, if you have a good mafia trial, and a good mafia trial, what does a proper mafia don do? What does a proper godfather do? He finds the witnesses and he kills them. He kills the witnesses. Because the witnesses will make him indicted. The witnesses will make him go to prison. The witnesses will make him be executed. So he hires his, his goons to go and kill the witnesses. And Satan is terrified of the witnesses. And that there must be witnesses in every age. And because you're a baptized Catholic doesn't mean you're a witness. Because you believe in Jesus doesn't mean you're a witness. What is a witness? The witness is the one that speaks out. Look at the situation with this coronavirus. How many witnesses amongst the, the doctors are there that it's a bunch of bull honking? There are at least thousands and thousands of doctors in the United States that know that it is baloney. How many witnesses are there? Two doctors stand up in California and say, look, this is not the way to deal with the, with the virus. Uh, the, we're not seeing the cases like this, and then you shouldn't wear a mask, and everybody has viruses, and you have uh, SARS on your skin, and it's good for you, and you shouldn't be holding them, you should not be acting the way we're acting right now, and they got fired. They got fired. So the witnesses, how many witnesses, we say, a, what we normally say, a witness is somebody who saw the crime. A witness is not someone who saw the crime. A witness is someone that testifies that he saw the crime. A witness is not one that says, I saw that he is innocent. A witness is one that testifies that he is innocent. So that there were thousands of people standing around the cross on Good Friday. But there was only one witness. We will notice, however, in the history of the church, even though there are many bad times, you will notice that there is never a time in which no one is, faith, is faith, faithful. It was one of the arguments of the St. Robert Bellman. What about even Holy Saturday? The Blessed Virgin Mary was faithful. When St. John and the James and, and, and Peter did not fell asleep in the garden, the Blessed Virgin Mary was not asleep. Mary Magdalene was not asleep. But he did not ask them to stay awake. He asked the priests to stay awake. But they did stay awake on their behalf. And then what about during this day? He abraded the apostles for their lack of faith. But St. John had faith. And there were, there were, oh, the apostles were silent and they were away from God on the Good Friday, but there was a thief that bore witness. A thief bore witness when he said, this man has done no wrong. Everyone knew he did no wrong. They were not witnesses. What is our duty? And our Lord Jesus Christ said, it is your duty to be a witness. How does the devil succeed? The devil succeeds when those that say they know and love and serve him serve God, do not witness. When you go get to be confirmed, the bishop gives a slap. He gives that slap to remind you that if you stand for the true faith, 
If you bear witness to the truth, you will be slapped. How many priests in the society of St. Pius X secretly agree with the resistance? How many people secretly follow us? We have so many followers. I'm with you 100%. Let me, let me pull out my clapping device. We talk about the resistance. We talk about the truth every time we go in the parish hall. we got a special resistance table in the back. When we pull down the what gets marked cones of silence, they come down. Out come the cones of silence, and we speak of the secret code. And we're talking about the truth. But if you read the sacred scripture, what does, he, what does God say? And when you know about the lives of the saints, what do they say? What is done in secret? Evil is done in secret. Lies are spoken in secret. Does everybody want to go and find out what your secret is? I secretly believe in Jesus. I secretly believe in the truth. I secretly am against all bad things. And there's so many good priests out there. So many good faithful. So many good people everywhere. The good people all over the place. Because they believe. But what happened on Palm Sunday, just before Palm Sunday, when our Lord Jesus Christ came into Jerusalem just before his crucifixion, and before Palm Sunday, when he came into Jerusalem, they all talked about him. That's what it says in the gospel. They all talked about him. And some said he was good. And some said he was really bad. And some said they were undecided on the issue. And there was a dispute about them. But they did not speak openly for fear of the Jews. Come forward 2,000 years later. Some say Jesus Christ and his Catholic Church are good. Some say it's bad. Some say you should join the resistance. Some say you should not. Some say that he's good. Some say that he's bad. And they all speak about these things. But they do not speak openly for fear of the Jews. Times have not changed. And so what our Lord Jesus Christ says, what is your duty? You must be witnesses to me in Judea. That is inside the church. You must be witnesses in Samaria. The Samarians are half Jews. They are the ones that are like the Protestants. They are actually heretics. They say they believe in the true religion, but they don't. You will be witnesses to me to the uttermost parts of the earth. Be witnesses to me in Judea. That is, be witnesses to me amongst Catholics. Be witnesses to me amongst your fellow Catholics. Be witnesses to me amongst the Protestants. Be witnesses to me to the uttermost parts of the earth where are found the Hindus and the Muslims and the atheists and the animists and all of the false religions and those who don't believe in any religion whatsoever. I did not guarantee you life. I didn't guarantee you success in this world. I told you, it is your duty as my follower to be a witness. And what does the Lord Jesus Christ say? He who confesses me before men, I will confess him before the Father. That's why you notice the type of saints that we have in the Missal. One of them is called the Confessor. There isn't anything below that. There is the martyr who confessed the faith by his own blood. There is the bishop and a martyr. There is the priest and martyr. There is a lay person, whether it be monk or a woman, and martyr. There's a virgin and martyr. There's a non-virgin and martyr. But all men are obliged to confess Christ. The confessor is one who confessed Christ before men. And we must confess Christ before men, including in this age of persecution, in this age of difficulty, we must confess Christ before men. And this is something that is the final instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be witnesses to me in Samaria and in Judea and in the utter of Judea, the place of the true religion, in Samaria, the place of the heretics, and in the uttermost parts of the earth, the place of the pagans. You will be my witness everywhere. And now the witnesses don't want to be witnesses anymore. And when we are witnesses, what happens? There is a conversion of souls. There are martyrs. Martyrs are the seed of Christians. Now it's interesting, after all this time, now that it appears to be safe, now is the time that everyone's being brave. 1,200 churches, Protestant churches, of course, not Catholic. They would never do that. They're not that brave. So the 1,200 Protestant churches all over California are going to disobey the rule of the governor and open this weekend. 
But it's okay because Trump said it's okay. Trump said now that all the churches must be open this weekend. So now it's okay. And then the governors who don't do that, don't, don't abide by that, that they are going to, he's going to override. But he knows that those that are going to open their churches, they are going to realize their people must be safe. Yes, they're going to follow all the directives, so make sure you check the temperature before you come in. You check your temperature in the confessional, and you have mortal sin, that's really hot. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> you have venial sin, that's all, let's get rid of that too, because that, that, that'll heat up on you. But they're going to check your temperature, not the temperature of your soul, the temperature of your forehead, the temperature of your body. And you've got to wear a face mask so that you don't have an identity. You know that when we celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, we never say, I pray for Pope. That's like a man with a face mask. I pray for Bishop. That's a man with a face mask. We pray for an individual real man who is the Pope named Francis. And then, and then we pray for the individual real man who is the Bishop of the Diocese. We pray for the individual real man who is the priest celebrating the Mass. So when I am celebrating the Mass, I say, I pray for my own personal innumerable sins and the innumerable sins of those people attending my Mass and of all the Christians throughout the world. But it always starts specific. Every individual. Every individual. And the face mask is a way, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, purpose, it's a purpose of the face mask. It is a demonic thing which is designed to take away our own personal identity to separate one person from another, to create great super, great psychological and spiritual problems, to make us slaves. And so you're going to go to church under the direction of the diocese, and to the church under the direction of the government. We don't go to the church under the direction of the government, nor even the diocese. We go to the church under the direction of God. Now we must understand, we must be witnesses. You even heard a Protestant minister say, but I am not, I must recognize now, we try to obey, to the Protestant ministry, we try to obey all the directives of the government. Safe distancing, wearing gas masks, putting on, uh, you know, checking temperatures, and, yeah, and, and, and not more than 50 people at one service and maxing the services, but we still got a cease and desist order from the government. They didn't give that cease and desist order for Walmart, they didn't give it to McDonald's, but they gave it to the church. And then even a Protestant minister says, and I realize we can't be asking for permission. And he is even a member of a false religion. We don't ask for permission. As we mentioned so often, St. Valentine, we always love St. Valentine because of the fact that he's the only one in the Missal that says priest and martyr. All the rest say confessor or martyr. He's the only one that says priest and martyr. Many bishops and martyrs, but only one is priest and martyr, and that's St. Valentine. And St. Valentine, the priest, what did he say when the emperor said to him, Datius, you must worship, I'm, I may allow you to function, you don't ask me. Uh, excuse me, rather, said Valentine, I don't ask you for permission. I am the representative of God. I don't ask you for permission. And our ancestors have died rather than do these kinds of things. So the fact is that we don't, we're not asking for permission. We have the right to and the duty to know, love, and serve God as he should be known, love, and served, which is in the Holy Roman Catholic Church, by the true sacrifices of the Mass, with the true faith. We must be witnesses in Jerusalem, witnesses in Judea, witnesses in Samaria, witnesses to the uttermost parts of the earth. And this is the final instruction of Jesus Christ for what happened to heaven. And then he said, Not many days hence, you will be filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Pentecost that day came, and then they went out and carry Christ to the ends of the earth, and he must be carried until the ends of times. So it was recognized, it is important for us to be witnesses. That's what all Catholics are obliged to be, even if they're a thief hanging on a cross because of their just crimes. Very important to recognize that thief, St. Dismas. He was the most unworthy man of the crucifixion. He helped make Christ be mocked even more because Christ was, was, was crucified next to a common thief. And he was guilty of great crimes, and he was also in the state of mortal sin that morning, and he cursed God at the beginning of the crucifixion. Both thieves cursed Christ at the beginning. But then this thief stopped cursing Christ. This thief saw the Blessed Virgin Mary. This thief repented of his own sins. 
This thief recognized that that man did not suffer the just reward of his, but was innocent. And then he spoke openly. Who's going to listen to a beggar? Who's going to listen to a thief? Well, now, 2,000 years later, we hear the words of the thief. Because even when a thief, or a prostitute, or a murderer, or a criminal of any kind, or one that has abandoned God with all in every manner of sins, if they repent and speak the truth, they will be witnesses that shall be heard to the uttermost ends of the earth. And those that do not do this, they shall be forgotten. And our Lord Jesus Christ made it very clear, and it's his final instruction on Ascension Thursday. So it must be a very important instruction. We must be witnesses. Even during the time of persecution, when the church was in silence, and the church was hidden, even there, they are always looking for someone to convert, always looking for someone to come to Christ. And many of the martyrs said, I'm the heck with being in, in, in the inside of the catacombs. I'm coming out straight to the Colosseum. I'm going straight to the emperor. I'm going straight to the Roman soldiers. And so many of them did. And they converted the whole world to Christ because they were witnesses in adversity, witnesses in good times, witnesses in every time in between. And that's why it's very important for us right now to be witnesses. It is not for us to look for the approval of modernist Rome. It is not for us to look for the approval of the world. It is for us to be witnesses to the divine truth against the errors and heresies of Vatican II, against the errors and heresies of our own country, against the errors and heresies of the world. And just to, to just preach the truth as it must be preached, that the whole world must accept our Lord Jesus Christ as the King of all, and the King of all nations, the King of all, of all families, the King of all businesses, the King of all of our own hearts, the King of every part of our being and every part of the world. He is the King of every creature, and we need to make it known to the world that we must be followers of him and believe in all of his teachings. And we must be witnesses, witnesses, witnesses. And a witness does not mean that we believe Jesus Christ, does not mean that we agree with him, does not mean that we secretly follow him. It means that we witness, that we give testimony, that we speak openly. And many of these Protestants and many of these non-Catholics who right now are trying to stand up, even though they're not standing up for the correct truth, they're actually trying to stand up. They shall receive the grace to repent. They shall receive the grace of the true faith. And they will beat us into the kingdom of heaven. Whereas many of these Catholics who, are, who do have the truth, but they hold the treasure, take, you do not take the light and put it under the bushel. Our Lord says, don't take the light and put it under the bushel. What happens if you put a light under the bushel? The barn catches on fire and you die don't take the light and put it under a bushel, but take the light and put it on the sun, on the housetops, put it on the candle stand, that it might shine. This is what we have to do in our time of crisis. And we're all afraid, we're all weak sinners, but listen, no matter how sinful we are, no matter how weak we are, we must be witnesses, and this is going to be our ticket to eternal salvation. Glory to you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.